One of the greatest forces driving human nature lies in our ability to feel accepted. It's safe to say that we're all searching to belong under a sense of oneness, whether that is to our own families, to groups of friends, co-workers, or communities both local and global. However, the further we seek to belong to one group or another, the more we identify ourselves accordingly and alienate those who don't fit into our group. Social identity theory examines the way in which we identify to many specific groups and how a sense of otherness can foster this natural prejudice. According to social theory, as we move through life, we do not act as a single self, but rather as the member of the different groups that we identify with. First, we will look at social identity theory, then explain how this theory was first developed and subsequently analyzed before finally finding ways in which to relate and integrate social identity theory into our everyday lives, specifically through social media platforms. But first, let's define social identity theory and examine how we use it to classify ourselves and others. Social identification theory is a perception of oneness with a group of persons. According to this theory, we classify ourselves and others into various social categories, such as an organizational membership, religious affiliation, gender, and age cohort. People may be classified in various categories, and different individuals may utilize different categorization schemas. Social classification serves two functions. It cognitively segments and orders the social environment to provide the individual with a systematic means of defining others, and enables the individual to locate or define herself in that environment. Social identification is that perception of oneness with or belongingness to some human aggregate. For instance, I typically define myself according to the groups that I belong to. I am a woman, I am American, I am Southern, I am a student. Social identity theory cannot be understood in relation to just one person. In fact, the definitions of others and self are largely relational and comparative and involve defining oneself in relation to individuals and other categories. This compelling theory was originally developed by social psychologists Henry Tudge Bell and John Turner and argues that group membership creates a self-identification that will favor the in-group at the expense of the out-group. These researchers demonstrated through a series of experiments that the mere act of categorizing oneself as a member of a group, no matter how meaningless, was sufficient to produce in-group favoritism and out-group disfavor. Once people recognize that they have membership in a given group, they work to increase their self-esteem by positively differentiating their in-group from some other out-group. Social identity theory argues that people find positive distinctiveness in a collective significant other, in this case their in-group. We like to define our sense of identity in terms of we rather than I. Until today's politically polarized climate, it's far too easy to see the distinctions between we who are right and those who are wrong. Psychologist Matthew Hornsey tells us that human interaction reigns on a spectrum from being purely interpersonal on one end to purely in-group on the other. Interpersonal interactions involve people relating to each other entirely as individuals with no awareness of social categories, while intergroup interactions involve people relating entirely as representative to their groups. Any personal qualities are overwhelmed by the membership to the group. One might think of two friends or lovers relating to one another based on the spiritual or soul level as a small private connection, versus the big ways we move through life and generally think of ourselves in intergroup scenarios such as the through our nationality, gender, and even job category. Social identity theory argues that moving from one end of the spectrum to the other changes the way we view other people and the way we view ourselves. When examining our interactions with others, we rarely do so without at least some recognition of their membership in some other social category, which begs the question, what motivates a shift from the interpersonal to the intergroup end of the spectrum in our interactions with others? Certainly the context and reason for our communication is important, 
But the constant element in this shift is the value in constructing our identities that people give to their in-group membership. By being able to ask ourselves these questions, we can examine how much our in-group identities affects our everyday life through communication with others. Social identity theory is so ingrained into how we view ourselves and other people that it can relate to so many aspects of our everyday lives. For instance, the theory can be manipulated to influence how we view ourselves through the products that we choose to own. Advertising can also persuade brand identification in an attempt to cultivate an attitude toward its product that would lead to a certain behavior. Social identity theory is even more prevalent in our everyday lives as we heavily incorporate social media into our habits and self-perceptions. Most of us join sites like Facebook and Instagram to belong to social groups, an example of self-categorization, and to let others see what we're doing and to see what others are doing, an example of social comparison, which are both aspects of social identity theory. These social media platforms also quickly help us identify those in outgroups. Coming across a Facebook friend that is a member of the PETA group, for instance, may make someone realize, as an avid hunter and meat consumer, that they self-identify in the opposite way, and it may cause them to seek out the opposite viewpoint. Being motivated to counter PETA's viewpoint may cause someone to find an anti-PETA group to join. In turn, by joining these groups, like-minded friendships can form and continue to influence and inform each other. Sites like Pandora, Amazon, and even theory and literature site Mendeley finds ways to connect us through music, subjects, and products to other people and other goods that we may be interested in. While more of our lives show up online, it's easier than ever to see the social identity theory play out in our interactions, thoughts, and habits. Breaking down this theory has shown us how we move through life, not as a single self, but rather as a member of the different groups that we identify with. Social identity theory is our perception of oneness and helps us to define others and ourselves in our social environment. It also explains how in our outgroup identification may promote a bias or a natural prejudice as we communicate with others. Social identity theory is shaped by what we buy, how we present ourselves online, and how we may manipulate this theory to promote our own social influence and those of our businesses. So, knowing what we do about social identity theory, what do the groups to which you belong say about you? Thank you.